I think to start with who I am, and so basically a medical doctor and serial entrepreneur. Uh, I've had the good fortune of creating, by working with extraordinary people, creating companies that have gone through $28 billion in market cap, but more importantly, have delivered the number one drug in the world for prostate cancer and the number one drug in its class for migraine. And why that's important is when I came to Juvenescence, it was about drug development. And what Juvenescence is about is we're trying to modify how you age. Specifically, I'd like to add 10 healthy years of living to somebody's life because the gap between health span and lifespan is 10 years. And it would be amazing if you could be healthy until one week, one day before you die. So that was the purpose of the company. And looking at the demographics, it's rapidly changing and being widely discussed in Sweden. Uh, but we're focusing a lot on how to provide uh, help rather than maybe preventing aging in itself. What is your take on that? So we have a huge crisis that's going to be as big as the financial crisis and the pandemic we just lived through. And that is the problem of an inverted demographic pyramid. So basically, there's not going to be enough young people to support the elderly if they're retiring at 65. So a couple of things. One is politicians who are very poor at making tough decisions are going to have to decide whether to fund the elderly or fund childhood education. So it's going to be very difficult. But if they were healthy till 85, 95, that changes everything. You may not be able to retire at 65, but you'd be able to continue to work. And we know that's super important to your point about mental health. To live longer, you need to be happy, love, respected, and have a sense of purpose. And obviously, if you're decrepit and, and, in, and ill, that doesn't help at all. So this is transformational, and, and it's going to be a very big deal. And it's going to happen so much faster than you think. Yeah, and, and for municipalities uh, especially, is there anything that they should be focusing on going forward? They need to begin to think about this in the context of how do we support the elderly, how, we, how do we transition them. One of the things we talked about at my company was creating like a match.com where instead of dating, we would take an older person who could perhaps help a young entrepreneur. You know, again, giving them a sense of purpose. And I think that's easy to implement at a municipal level, local level. Um, I think an app is going to be coming. We have an app that we've developed whereby you can question any person and give them five or six questions, which will tell you if they're slipping into depression. And because it's through a phone, you could then, it could literally phone your doctor and say, you need to see Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so and have them come in. And again, easily implemented on a local level as opposed to more of a provincial level or even a federal level. We've talked a little bit about the physical side and then we talked about the mental side. Um, but what has been the biggest technical uh, or tech enabler for you in your work? So things have accelerated incredibly in medicine recently. Um, Macquarie said that medical knowledge in 2010 was doubling every three and a half years, but in 2020 it was doubling every 73 days. And that's because of an incredible influx of money, but also the unlocking of the human genome and the quality of computers. So those three things, money, plus the now understanding the genome and increases in the uh, computing capacity have had an incredible effect. Also, I think the next generation, because machine learning has helped a lot as well. It's beginning, it's not there yet. It's very good at chemistry, recognizing pattern. It's rubbish at biology because that's chaos theory and they're not there yet. But we have quantum computing drug development will be done by machine learning. So in general, uh, do you have any uh, specific advice? Like if you're an organization? <laughs> to stay young forever. Yeah, for the... Um, I mean, there's lifestyle things um, that you can do. You know, um, some of the, the obvious ones as far as smoking and diet and, and low stress. The number one thing that we've seen as far as a lifestyle thing is fitness. Walter Bortz, head of gerontology at Stanford, said if you are fit, you mentally and physically decline at a half percent a year. Unfit, 2% a year. That's a huge delta. So I think that's big. I think most people know about diet, as I alluded to earlier. Um, and then there's some strange things like flossing every night. You're supposed to add four years to your life. Although I will argue, is it the flossing or the type of person who flosses every <laughs> night that adds four years to your life? And then the drugs are going to come fast and furious. One of the drugs we have at our company allows you to live eight to 10 years longer healthy because of the pathway it works on. This is again, gonna happen so much faster than people think. And so people who are listening to this or watching this need to think about how they treat their body going forward as it's gonna be very important. And so uh, how old can we be? It, it's a heavily argued thing, whether we have a, a best before date, and a, you know, at 150, 125, the body shuts down, or do we reach escape velocity? UCLA did a study and they gave 12 people over the age of 50 
four or five products, <clears throat> and they were able to measure their biological age at the beginning of the end of the study. It was a one-year study, and they were able to knock two years off their biological age in the one year. If I can continue to knock two years off your life every year, you reach escape velocity and you can live to a thousand. Thank you so much, Greg Wheatley, for taking your time. Pleasure.